for a person that Mm -hmm. I may or may not know their taste that well. Yeah. You know, so if we get these things ahead of time, then we can leisurely spend our well, time wrapping And the beauty them and of planning like so far ahead is that you can, if there's somebody that you don't know really well that you do want to buy a gift for, mm-hmm. you have a few months to kind of, you know, kind of slip in some questions here That's and very there true. and kind of get to know them and, and, and kind of, you know, and also too, with, when I'm throughout, you know, October, November, September, October, November, I know, you know, I have a list in my head of who I'm going to buy holiday presents for, and I know my price point, right? Because I've set it pre. And and if I see something at the store that I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so them. Mm-hmm. I that's when I I'll purchase it because it falls into my price point, right? And it's for them, and then it's done, and and then it's a meaningful gift right. so it's something that I know that they are really going to appreciate and like and let me tell you the stores like to convince you that the best sales are in November and December that's not but true. it is absolutely 100% not true if you know what you're looking for and you kind of keep an eye on it that's right. you can actually find much better prices you know throughout you know these next few months though right. there's Labor Day sales mm-hmm. you know there's back to school sales there's right. uh what do we have we have you know I, I, if you wait until Black Friday, mm-hmm. you you know, you, and who wants to stand in line for, you know, That's 20 hours thing. for a toaster. But right. when you wait that long, you're actually not getting as good a deal as you really could had you started in September or October. Right. So planning ahead will save you money, knowing how much you want to spend on a person and where you're comfortable. Mm-hmm. And you'll probably just start seeing things because you're thinking about them, you'll start seeing things that are, that they will get those gifts and they'll think, oh my goodness, this person really thought about me. Exactly. I didn't get the C's box, you know, C's candy box <laughs> on December 24th. Because that's 24. a go-to, right? Mm-hmm. You, you go and you get the, the box of C's candy uh-huh. or the cookie tin mm-hmm. or whatever. And not to say that those are bad gifts because, you know, people can use those too because if you're giving a holiday party and someone shows up with those things, you can open them up and it be, can become a part of the desserts or whatever. Yeah. that you have but you know to be stressed out and going to buy that just yeah. to give away generically isn't yeah, those the best the, idea those are the things you get as your oops I, f- I, forgot, I forgot my last minute you yes. get to seize, seize candy and the everybody knows that yeah you know? <laughs> you know and and but if you if you really you know if there's a person in your life that you want to buy a gift for if you start yes. planning ahead you're gonna find that thoughtful gift and those are the gifts that they're gonna remember right those are the gifts that you know in July of next year they'll be like which, which is great one of my favorite gifts ever ever was a friend had planned early and Mm -hmm. she knew that I needed and it's so silly she needed knew that I needed a new dish mat for under my dish drainer Mm -hmm. and I never got around to getting it and she clocked that sometime around September and for the holidays that's what she gave me it's my it's like one of my favorite gifts because she saw something that I needed and it's probably a $15 gift but she saw something that I needed and she planned ahead and so small things like that can be really meaningful as opposed to spending a hundred dollars on on, you know, a box DVD set that I will never watch. Exactly, because who has time to sit down and watch the box exactly. set, right? And you're right, because some of the best gifts that I've got I've received are things that were totally thoughtful and not expensive. Mm-hmm. And I cherish them the most mm-hmm. because you know the person thought about you when they bought it, mm-hmm. you know, and it's something you can use or something that you even if it's like a little whatnot, you can put it somewhere and just cherish it because you know that this person was specifically thinking about you exactly. and had you in mind mm-hmm. when they purchased it. So I, I love it. And so, Ari, I want you to give, again, um, the website they can go to to download your Christmas in July. Yeah, so it's it's themoneystylist.com, mm-hmm. and you're going to want to look for the freebies page. And on the freebies page, you'll see the uh the um, holiday planner, and you're going to want to just enter your email address there, and it'll take you right to where you can download the ebook as well as the Excel spreadsheet. So that way, when you get closer, it, mm-hmm. the Excel spreadsheet will give you the chance to actually think about all these things that I've been talking about. Think about how much you want to spend on wrapping paper. Right. Think about how much you want to spend on Christmas ornaments and your gift tree bags and, and your, your gift tree bags and and, and you know maybe a it, there's all these categories that you might not have even realized and mm-hmm. it'll start get, getting the thought process going and start getting you thinking about it. And then when you can start putting in how much you 
feel comfortable spending. Right. And then as you get closer to the spending, you can actually start tracking your spending so that you know you don't go over in the categories. That's, so that you that's stick amazing. to your numbers. So yes. that way January, and, and also what it does is it allows you, once you put in how much you want to spend in each category, it's going to mm-hmm. give you a total. Right. And you might, when you tally it all up, it might be $7,000 and you might go, oh my gosh, I can't right. do $7,000. Right. So it gives you the opportunity to go back and be like, okay, I can't afford $7,000. I'm going to go and I'm going to trim where, where mm-hmm. would I be okay? Maybe I don't throw a party. Maybe I just go to somebody else's party and bring a gift. Right. And um, so it'll give you an opportunity to see what, what you, th- what you're going to, you were sort of planning on spending without realizing what the total was, the big picture. And that's usually the problem. Yeah. And, and what it'll do, let's say, let's say you get it to where you're comfortable or you're comfortable with all the gift numbers and, and let's say that's $3,000. Mm-hmm. Well, it's July, so you know it's the end of July. So, you know, you've got August, September, October, and, right. and probably three, those three months. You'll pro- probably start in November, you know, like actually really shopping. actually getting more stuff together. Right. So you've got about three and a half months to save. So let's say, let's say, oh my goodness, I want to spend 3000 on Christmas. That's $1,000 a month that you need to put aside That's for right. Christmas. That's a lot. So you might actually yes. g- go back and shave it down more and say, you know what? we're not doing gifts this year. We're doing Secret Santa. Right. Or we are, you know, we are going to have a potluck Christmas where everybody brings a dish as opposed to me hosting the entire Christmas. Right. So it gives you the opportunity to see the, the, the number that Christmas or the holidays are going to cost you and then adjust what your intentions are and adjust what your activities are. So that way you can come out of it in January. You, you'll, you have the time to save the money right. so that by the time the holidays roll around, you have that money, you just pull it out of your savings, go ahead, pay for it, and you January rolls around and you are good to go for the rest of the year. There's no worry about making your bills. You know your rent's going to be paid. You know that there's not going to be a huge credit card that you open up and have that moment of panic. Yes. So it just starts the year off, you know, on a great note and you'll have all those memories, you know, to, to take with you into 2016. Right. And fun things. And mm-hmm. you're not straddle with bills and that's a great point and that's what I want to talk about next is how much debt people incur on credit cards um, in this this segment you know people go into crazy credit card debt and every store has that credit card and they say we'll give you 10% off on you know whatever you purchase if you get our credit card and guess what the 10% doesn't even cover the interest rate that you're going to incur when you put your debt on that card. Because most store credit cards have a high interest rate, usually somewhere around 18%. So if you get a credit card from a store and you start racking up debt on it, that 10% that you saved, you think, on whatever the, the, the item was you purchased 18% interest is what you're paying on the card. So you start out losing. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, Macy's makes more money in credit card fees and interest charges than they do as a retail store as a whole. I believe it. So they, Macy's is not a retail store. Macy's is actually a credit company. A credit company. So, and the credit company always wins. They're not set up to help you. They, they, you know, so... And, and actually, as you were saying, I've seen with my clients, mm-hmm. um, the general store cards are often at 23.9%. Yes. And I've seen them go as high as 33%. 30, that's right. And, and that 33% is 33% of every dollar that you are accumulating debt on. So think of it that way, 33%. And that's before you start actually paying off the debt. I always, I always tell my clients, well, think, think about this. Let's say, let's say it is, you know, you're buying somebody a blouse Mm -hmm. for Christmas or for, um, you know, their birthday and you're going to use the store card and that blouse is a hundred dollars. And, but the interest rate on the card that they're offering you is 20%. Mm -hmm. So that blouse is really $120. Do you still want that blouse at $120? And most people would say, no, that's not worth it at $120. And that's just at $120 to begin with. If you don't pay it off right away, it becomes $123, $127, $130. And by the time you pay it off, you might have have paid $250 for a blouse for for your friend. And I can pretty much guarantee that that was not your intention. That's right. And it started out at $100, mm-hmm. which is expensive, by the way, for a blouse. Yes. <laughs> so to begin with, yes. depending on your budget. 
Right. And so we're talking to Ari Gold. This is Lunch with the Finance Bunch. And Ari is our money stylist. And we're talking about Christmas in July. We want to make Christmas a happy, festive, and joyous time for our listeners. And we don't want you to go into debt over a holiday. So before we get all emotional about the holidays and become very defensive, in July, when we're still thinking rationally, let's talk about it. And so we're talking about having Christmas in July, not to celebrate Christmas in July, but to prepare for Christmas in July versus the 24th of December. (laughs) Because, you know, in my classes, I tell people Christmas, there's certain things that come the same time every year. The day of the week may change, but the date doesn't change. Your birthday is the same day every year. Christmas, same day every year. So if when you're planning things, if Christmas is on the 25th of December every year, why are we panicked running around on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, you know, diving under the gates of, you know, stores (laughs) before they close to buy gifts when we should have started earlier? It's just poor planning, and we wind up paying for it because, you know, marketing companies make a great deal of money. This is where the money is made on sensationalizing this holiday, repeatedly, you know, you see the commercials over and over and over again, and you become more and more panicked, and the next thing you know, you're spending money that you don't have. Your budget was $1,000, and you spent $4,000 at 33% interest. I mean, you do the numbers. It becomes absolutely crazy. Well, the, well these marketing companies have studied us. They, you know, they spend millions and millions of dollars, so they know exactly what to put in commercials to make you f- have that heightened sense of anxiety. The, because the height, the more you're, you have that heightened sense of anxiety, you're gonna actually try because you feel so pressured. You're just mm-hmm. gonna get whatever is the most accessible. Right. And so they put the most the things that they put in the stores. They, I mean, they study where to put things in the stores. That's right. They Placement. Study, they study That's what right. music to be playing. They study, you know, where like. And so they're they're targeting you, and they're actually using your brain chemistry against you. So they're heightening your anxiety so that you'll reach for the easiest and not necessarily the cheapest. That's right. And. So they get you. They, they they get you to do that because that's how they make their money. And let me tell you, they're spending millions and millions and millions of dollars researching us. And you better believe that they're getting that their uh, bank, that's you right. know, return for their investment. That's right. Which means you that they're getting their money back from you. you that's know? right. So they know that you're gonna just go ahead and get the most expensive thing, and so you're done. But if you start early, if you start, you know, now you can actually really have fun. You can see you while you're at the stores, you know, doing your normal everyday errands, you can kind of see things and be like, oh my gosh, that could be good. Maybe I'll think about that for them. Or right. it really actually makes Christmas fun. And you, and, it does. And you, you know, you, it's actually, it brings the Christmas spirit back to Christmas, you right. know, the, the love and the fun and the planning and the anticipation, you know, we're getting rid of the anxiety and we're, we're bringing back that in- anticipation of being like six years old and being like, oh my gosh, I can't wait till they open their present. And, you know, so I, and it's the thing is I love watching my friends open their gifts because I've actually really spent time thinking about what I'm going to give them. So I get my Christmas joy is watching my friends open their gifts. Right. And, and also one thing that, that we do as friends is we set a limit. We all, and you know, obviously being, being a money coach, I'm very, we're very open. My friends and I are very right. open about money and we will set, we will set a cap on yes. what we want to spend on each other, um, early Mm-hmm. And knowing that, that, you know, I know that certain people don't make, a, you know, as much money as my other friends. So we set a cap that works for everybody and That's we discuss right. it yes. so that nobody, you know, one person isn't buying somebody a $75 gift and one person's not buying a $10 gift. So, and it's a number that feels comfortable for everybody. Right. So that might be a discussion that you have with your close knit group of friends now to say, okay, sh- you know, at Christmas, sh- how are you doing in your, your financial world? Do you think we need to buy gifts or should we do a secret Santa or should we, how should we cap it? You know, where do you want to do $25? What feels right. comfortable for everybody? And if you set it now, it, it, there's no stigma to it in July. Right. Whereas if you get closer to Christmas, it's like, oh, I'm, am I being cheap or am I, you know, right. It, but if you start talking about it now, there's no, it's so detached from the holidays that it's okay. You know, it's okay. It's okay to kind of say, "Hey, why don't we keep it? Why don't we keep it? You know, minimum this year." 
Right. Why don't we stay within our budget this mm-hmm. year? That's new, a new concept. And let me tell you, your friends will probably thank you if you bring it up. Yes, because, because nobody will. Wa- no, <laughs> nobody really wants. To, like you know, money is one of those taboo things. But the minute you say, "Hey, why don't we?" Do, everyone's gonna be like, "Oh my gosh, thank goodness she brought it up." Exactly. I would. I was thinking it, but didn't want to say it. So bring it up to your friends. They'll actually probably thank you, and 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 they'll be happy because it means less on their plate towards the holidays.